the important role of African Americans in our country's history during Black History Month, it's also an opportune time to educate and raise awareness about the unique challenges the Black community faces on the transplant waiting list. This week on TOSA Talks, we'll hear from a heart recipient in Austin, Texas, who received the gift of life and Dr. Clive Callender from the National Minority Organ Tissue Transplant Education Program will shed some light on how multicultural communities play a critical role in the transplant system. First, let's welcome Sybil McDade. Three years ago, she received a precious gift on a very special date. National Donor Day, also known as Valentine's Day, was the date she received a heart from a generous organ donor. Please tell us a little bit more about your transplant story and your health journey that led you to need a new heart. When I was 15 years old, I found out that I had a heart condition. And after that, I tried to do all the things that I was supposed to do to help keep my heart strong. And uh, as I grew older, I uh, started having some more problems. Uh, I had congestive heart failure. And it was at a, a point uh, back in uh, the early 2000s that I ended up having to have an aortic valve replacement. And after I had the valve replacement, I felt like I was just fine. I uh, went through that with no problems and I, I really felt good. And so uh, I continued on until I started having congestive heart failure episodes again. And I thought, wow, why is this happening again? And uh, basically I was told that my heart was uh, weakening and uh, we tried several other therapies uh, to strengthen my heart. However, I continued to have the congestive heart failure episodes and was eventually told that I needed to have a heart transplant, which of course was a surprise to me because I never ever thought that that was something that I would have to do. And so uh, we worked uh, to get my heart strong enough for the operation. And I went to uh, Ascension Seton Hospital where I had my uh, transplant surgery. It's kind of a bittersweet experience because you are happy to be able to get a organ. And in my case, it was a heart. But I also uh, felt guilty about the fact that someone had lost their life um, uh, to give me a second chance. Let's take a look at the numbers. African Americans are the largest group of multicultural communities in need of a transplant. This year, African Americans made up nearly 29% of the national population. In Texas alone, there are more than 3,000 African Americans waiting for an organ transplant. Those who are in need of a transplant happens to be significantly disproportionate to the number who are registered organ donors. In your opinion, what are some of the barriers within the Black community that are keeping people from becoming organ donors? Some people are mistrustful of the medical community and uh, fear that they will not uh, be told the truth about their conditions. Uh, there's also the unwillingness to talk to their family members because they feel that their family members may disagree with them about their decision to become an organ donor. There's a lot of misinformation about that. And so uh, miseducation and misinformation. Yeah, and certainly that is why it's so important to get all the right info out there so people can make an informed decision. Exactly, exactly. Well, during Black History Month, and of course, all throughout the year, why do you think it's important to diversify the donor registry and encourage others to make the decision to be an organ donor? I think that it's important just because, for one thing, you are definitely uh, going to be able to hopefully save someone's life. And uh, the other part of it is that being an organ donor, you can 
save up to eight lives. And when you're thinking about the African-American community, we think about the fact that if we don't have enough donors, then there are people who are suffering right now because they don't have a new kidney or a heart or you know, uh, some other organ. So when you think about that, it's really a gift. It's the gift of life for people. Well, thank you so much, Sybil. We appreciate you sharing with us. Thank you. Now let's meet Dr. Clive O'Callender, the founder of MOTEP, an organization with a mission to reduce the rate and number of ethnic minority Americans needing organ and tissue transplants. Can you first off tell us a little bit more about MOTEP and what your organization does to help people from multicultural communities in the transplant system? We started our efforts back actually in 1978 and uh, then we decided uh, because of the data that showed such a small number of uh, African-American and other minorities uh, as donors, that we would start an organization that would actually first go to the African-American community. It was thought that Blacks would not donate and other minorities wouldn't donate either. So with that in mind, we decided to uh, use a grassroots program that was patterned after the uh, civil rights grassroots programs uh, to go into the community to educate and empower them. Why are so many individuals from multicultural communities on the wait list? Well, you know, it's uh, not surprising because we have a, you know, when you look at the data, uh, three to four times the incidence of hypertension and uh, diabetes, which are the number one, number two causes of uh, end-stage renal disease. This is true in the African-American community. It's uh, almost the same story in the Native American and Latino Hispanic population. So it's our predisposition to uh, hypertension and diabetes beginning to become almost as frequent as the incidence of obesity. So that these are the reasons why we are so disproportionately represented uh, on transplant waiting lists. The question we often get uh, out there in the organ donation community is, do organ donors and recipients have to be of the same race? Absolutely not. And you know, it's interesting because when we first started out, we thought that the ethnic uh, association would be critically important. As long as it's a good match, that's what matters. Right, and that happens to be one of the misconceptions that are out there pretty prevalent that people think that you have to be of the same ethnic group. So you said it perfect, is that the transplant waiting list, it's equal for all. It's based on a certain number of different criteria, but of course, tissue types, it could be a factor in there. That's correct. And you know, one of the things that I think I helped to change was that when I first became involved with transplantation, they did have some racially discriminatory practices, which they have since abandoned. Uh, and so we now have much more equitable allocation for transplantation of organs than we did uh, many years ago. So now we can say we have uh, getting very close to equitable uh, organ allocation, which is the goal. Yeah, so true. And can you expand a bit more on how people from multicultural communities, they really can make a positive impact in a number of ways? Uh, I think that MOTEP has proven that the, the way to get uh, uh, improvement in organ donation is go into the community, educate the community, tell them how to register for, to become organ donors, tell them to have family discussions. The ability to register and be an organ donor is something that gives you uh, a legal right so that no matter what your next of kin says, no matter what your spouse, what anybody else says, it is illegal if you decide to become a registered organ donor for anybody to overcome that. But it would help if you'd have a family discussion and let everybody know what you want. But what we want is everybody to become donors as many as possible because 20 people die every single day because of the shortage of donors. And so we need to do whatever we can to educate and, and empower our communities. Because I, I found throughout my career that uh, the community is probably the best way to make changes in, in our lives uh, because community education and empowerment makes all the difference. Yes. 
Well, we certainly appreciate your organization and all the work that you are doing to educate the community. Thank you for the opportunity to spread the message of how we can all help each other. Remember everyone, you can always sign up to save lives at tosa1.org. And we hope you tune in next time to another episode of TOSA Talks.